All right, so uh, I'm here with my friend Tom. We were actually standing in the uh, the Ream showroom where there's a whole bunch of product installed. So purpose of me and you meeting in person is to actually have a little bit of a discussion about Amendment 15. Uh, so you and I are quite familiar with Amendment 15 and what that means. There's some pretty dramatic changes coming in July. So if you want to just sort of walk us through, we've got some products around us that sort of help illustrate what changes are coming July 2nd. Uh, yeah, so... Um January 2025, the commercial boiler market is changing minimum 90% efficient. July 1st this year, residential boiler market is minimum 90% efficient. So all the boilers by 2025 that are sold in Canada will have to be condensing, uh, even if it's on a retrofit. But some of the other things are also on the water heating side. So um, Amendment 15 says July 1st this year, uh, commercial storage water heater that is for replacement, like this one might be over here, our universal, mm -hmm. um, uh, can still be 80% efficient. If you're replacing an atmospheric appliance, you can replace it with an atmospheric appliance. Uh, if it's at all, though, a new construction application, uh, either a new mechanical room you're adding to an existing building or a new building entirely, that is no longer sufficient. The code is now going to say that it must be a minimum 90% efficient, mm -hmm. which means as of July 1st this year, Units like our Triton water heater, which is a condensing tank type water heater, that's your new minimum requirement. You cannot put anything less efficient than, than that sort of product in. It's 90% combustion efficiency is what the threshold is, but realistically, as soon as you talk about 90, you're talking condensing. There is no non-condensing appliance that can achieve that efficiency. So if we look at that market space, when you just talk about Ontario, when you talk about Canada, how big of the, is that market going to be impacted going from this particular product to that product? Like. Uh, so, Percentage-wise, well, so usually we we estimate around eighty percent of the commercial uh, water heater market is ret is retrofit replacement. Uh -huh. So there's still going to be a lot of those going in. But as more of these go in on the new construction, slowly but surely your install base will convert into a condensing version, and you're going to get an increasing likelihood that these are what are on the shelf at your local distributor. And so your you know atmospheric appliance fails, you want to buy a new one to replace it, but that's not available, and this is so you just make the conversion to condensing because this is where, where things are going. So that's so with Amendment 15 in the retrofit, we're still going to be allowed to use this product. Do you think a lot of people are going to start to adopt this, or do you think there's going to be just as much re and re, or will people start looking early on going, I'd like to do this, because there's a, a cost and technology difference between doing the two options? Realistically, uh, based on my experience, there's still going to be a lot of re and re. That's my feeling, too. Yeah. We, we don't know. We don't have a crystal ball, but... That's the prediction. Not that some customers won't. There will definitely be some transition to the condensing technology, no question. Uh, some, some customers just want that. They just want to move to a, a greener option for the building, and they, and the, they want the, the fuel savings that you might associate with that. I mean, you, know, you may have a, you know, a residential domestic hot water bill may only be $500 a year, but uh, commercial is uh, quite a bit more. So. Yeah, I'm glad you clarified. So when we say $500 a year, we're referring residentially. If you're going into commercial, you're talking tens of thousands or thousands of dollars. One of the things that would be worth noting is what are some of the technical challenges that people are going to be faced with when they gravitate from this technology, you know, older technology to something like this? Uh, the main challenge that you would face on one of these systems changes is that's going to be a Cat 1B vent. So just like a galvanized steel vent material. Um, atmospherically vented, probably large diameter, just you know, straight up through a roof often. Yep. Um, these are a CAT4 vent, so usually thermoplastics or uh, AL29 stainless. Um, smaller diameter, gasketed, pressure sealed tight, so you cannot use the vent on one of those for one of these. You'd have to, you could use the penetration from that to run a new vent, right. but you will have to change the vent. So depending on where this equipment is installed, you actually could be faced with that right now this tank's installed here, we now need to relocate that appliance because where it's installed could be challenging from a venting purpose. Correct, yes, you very much could. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it, that's going to be the biggest challenge. One of the most interesting things, though, that happened with Amendment 15 was what they didn't get right on the first pass. So they, uh, they specified commercial tankless water heaters, uh, which we also have, um, have to be 94% efficient. They specified that uh, commercial water heaters have that minimum 90 for new, 80 for retrofit. And they specified uh, space heating boilers have to be 90% efficient. So again, condensing. But volume water heaters, like uh, like this unit here, mm -hmm. or domestic hot water boilers, 
they are not flow activated like a tankless is, they are not for space heating like a boiler uh, would be, and they are not storage water heaters. So technically they weren't included in any of the code. And when we reached out to Enercan, we said, did you mean to leave them out? Maybe because their, their annual fuel utilization is so much less than space heating, maybe you just, you're leaving that alone for some future regulation. But Enercan insisted that no, they did want to regulate it. So they've established a threshold by which they will categorize these under one of the other uh, uh, subheadings. So. If one of these has more than 20 gallons of water in the heat exchangers, then in the nominal capacity, as they call it, uh, they're going to regulate that like a storage water heater with the appropriate exemptions. If it's under 10, they're going to regulate that like a tankless. And if it's ten, between 10 and 20, they're considering that not regulated right now. So a little bit awkward to deal with, but the reality is, except for the largest ones from the Xtherm series for us, uh, the I think 2.5 million to 4 million BTU models, they have over 10 gallons of water. Every other domestic hot water boiler that we have has less. Right. So every domestic hot water boiler that we sell today has to be regulated like a tankless, which means minimum 94% efficiency. So assuming Intercan applies this to the market, that means that as of July, commercial volume water heaters and boilers must be condensing as of July 1st. Well, that's Even an interesting rituals. comment because a lot of people are probably wrongly looking at that thinking until they have, you know, outwards of 2025 because that's when we're going to see more changes coming. And the reality is it's coming in July. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and that's, that's both going to affect uh, people who are writing specifications because, again, it's new or retrofit, doesn't matter whether you, you could be retrofitting a project today and, or, or writing a specific, specification for something you're going to be doing in the summer a few months from now. It's only a few months away, so it's coming very quickly. But also, just if you're a facility owner and you're, uh, you're looking at a piece of equipment you have and you, you're budgeting for replacing it because you know it's been installed for 20 or 30 years, it's starting to give you trouble, so you're going to want to replace that, you may be budgeting for a like-for-like. Like. Maybe planning to put in a horizontal copper tube boiler uh -huh. uh, because that's what you have, but that's not condensing and that's not going to be permitted. You're going to have to put in condensing equipment as of July 1st this year, according to what Enercan has said. So one of the things that these condo associations, I'm going to pick on condo associations for a second, that they're going to have to pay attention to is they're going to want to be designing around different technology, right? Like you might be able to now say, right now we can do a like for like swap out. We, we've fallen into that gray area where it works but you really should be budgeting around that more elaborate system with new venting, new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a lot more money. And if you just you know, carry on the cost for like for like, it could be a one to one dollar where in fact it's like, no, for every dollar you had in that mechanical room, you now need six dollars in changes that's associated with it. Yeah, yeah so that's the, uh, the impact of Amendment 15. The other thing that's changing um, in the very well, this month, April 18th, is Energy Star. So Energy Star for gas appliances uh, regulates anything 300,000 BTUs and down. Mm -hmm. That's where they consider the, uh, the cutoff for residential or commercial. Um, Energy Star version 5 releases April 18th. Version 5 changed a few things, but some of them quite substantially. So one of them is tankless water heaters are now 0.95 UEF minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, at least one of the major competitors currently doesn't have anything on the market that is that efficient, so they're just going to not have any Energy Star rated equipment unless they rush something out there. How um, would you be working in new construction without that? Actually, new, uh, Energy Star is most relevant not for new construction but for retrofit because if to get rebates on new equipment, you need to have Energy Star certification. Generally yep. speaking, most of the rebate structures just say if it's listed on the Energy Star website, it will qualify. Yeah. And as of the version 5 release, a bunch of stuff is getting taken down. So we talked about that earlier about minimum code, right? Like the way that code is written is there's a minimum that they put out there to try to make sure systems work properly. But do you think that builders, as a general rule, if they're faced with, I have an Energy Star approved product and I have a non-Energy Star approved product, Will they go that route? Do you think there's builders that would do that? If, if for a builder, if it comes down to an either or, and you know the price equivalent equivalency there, and everything's fine, I'm, yeah, I'm sure they would pick the Energy Star version. But or I guess we would hope they would pick the Energy Star version. Well, they, they, there'd be no reason not to at a certain point. If it, yeah. all else being equal, why not? Yeah. But um, but but with Energy Star moving the the goalpost to some extent, it's going to be a little bit less likely that you have just a simple equal that is also Energy Star rated. It's more likely it's going to be the, the more premium product. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 0.95 UEF on tankless. Um, gas tank type is moving to a 0 0.81. Uh, 0 0.86 for, for a uh, different subcategory, but, but 0.81 is the lowest, which means only condensing gas tank type water heaters will be Energy Star rated anymore. So anything you may even see in this room that has an Energy Star rating on it uh, today, it's only to version 4. It won't be to version 5. But also uh, electric water heaters are all losing their uh, Energy Star rating 
only heat pump water heaters will keep it. Mm -hmm. So if it's just a regular electric, it won't be Energy Star rated anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a pretty significant shift in terms of how Energy Star is going to be applied in, in, the, in the near term. Yeah, I've had lots of conversations with Enbridge about this. So obviously Enbridge is, is very dialed into the changes that are coming because they're a, they're a gas utility. Do you think that engineers, designers, and contractors are aware of all the changes that you just discussed, or is this going to be a little bit of a surprise for them? Uh, I think both. So to date, I have not spoken with an engineer, contractor, or distributor, um, uh, well, uh, other than yourself as a distributor, <laughs> uh, who, uh, who has heard of any of it. MM15, yeah. Energy Star changes, it's all news. Yeah. Um, the Energy Star, uh, in particular, could be quite substantial because that may, there's a chance that in the future, having an Energy Star certification may become a requirement for selling equipment into homes in Canada. Mm -hmm. So restricting what gets one uh, could be a very big deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're a contractor, engineer, builder looking for more information, obviously uh, the place I would send people would probably be CHC. Like CHC, I did training on Amendment 15 before you and I met today. Uh, so if you're a contractor or anybody, a stakeholder is wanting to learn more about this, where do you think is the best resource to go? We can send them to the Canadian government's website, but that's, you know, you got to read a lot of stuff. Where can they go to get sort of the Coles notes, short of calling you or calling me, which, I mean, they're welcome to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right now, uh, there's various, there's some articles that have been created about it, but there's no real uh, central database to explain any of this. So, I mean, we're going to do our own advertising on uh, being amendment ready. Mm -hmm. Um, and planning accordingly. Uh, and for, in terms of Energy Star, I think they may have their own guideline document that they've published, but that's about it. Yeah. So there isn't an easy place for people to get informed about this, and, and the industry's been doing kind of an inadequate job talking about it, yeah. getting people ready. Uh, for example, with this sort of thing, uh, especially with this being a, a kind of an oddity and within the Amendment 15 language not quite covering it, Correctly. Yeah. Well, it's um, that 10 to 20 gallons, right? I'm in the middle. Now what do I do? Nobody knows. Well, in 10 to 20, they've said, we're not regulating that. Do whatever yeah. you want. That's what I mean. But, it's but it's under the 10, Wild West. Under 10, I'm, I'm confident that in, you know, September, October this year, there's going to be equipment getting installed in volume water heater applications that is not code compliant because people just don't know. Yeah. So we want to make sure that everyone's aware of what's going on because, I mean, we're going to change what products we offer to be code compliant. But it would be uh, kind of annoying for everybody if the people just out, you know, slinging equipment into the market because they're just ignorant that the code has changed. Yeah. Well, and in the one group that I didn't mention, which was, you know, just sat in training with us, is the building department officials. Like, our building department officials prepared with this information? Do they know what is coming? Because I have a feeling that a lot of them don't. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. I think that's... Uh, for whatever reason, I suppose it's, uh, I suppose the reason actually is relatively identifiable. This was Amendment 15 was first uh, tabled, I think, and started being discussed in 2016. It was uh, uh, adopted in 2019, and something happened after that for right? some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we had threw a, people off a little. We bit. have a two-year window where we have no memory of what unfolded, other than we stayed home a lot. Yeah, yeah, something was going on. I'm not sure what it was, but um, yeah. So uh, I think COVID definitely threw the through people's perspective appropriately off of this. So the years that people should have been preparing for Amendment 15 to take effect, people were distracted and doing other stuff. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, the dates haven't moved. So it's July yeah. 1st this year and January 1st, 2025 are these big changes coming that I don't think anyone's quite wrapped their heads around just yet. So. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, you're going to be doing training around Amendment 15. And I'll probably yeah. join you for some of the training on that. Uh, I did training with one of our counterparts, Tom, uh, another Tom. Uh, yeah. We did uh, detailed training with CHC. So they could certainly go to CHC if they want to get like the broad strokes of this is Amendment 15. We definitely talked about some things we didn't cover today. Uh, but I think the key is they need to find some resources, and it's fortunate people like you are, are willing to put the time in to educate people on what's changing. Yeah, that CHC webinar will be a, a, a must-watch recommendation for people in terms of information about what's happening with code changes and, and being compliant with that because it's, it's a lot changing very quickly, and it would be understandable that customers and contractors and engineers have a hard time keeping up with it. Yep. So it's good we put it together in that webinar so people have something they can go refer to. Um, but yeah, it's 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 going to be coming on all of us to to follow this stuff and, and not try to cheat the system yeah. when the time comes. Um, it's going to be like you say. There's going to be a lot of inspectors who don't know what they should be enforcing for the first little bit. That some stuff might get through the cracks, but yeah. hopefully we can we can move everyone along. Because quite frankly, this is all 
good for us. This is good for the for the industry. It's good for the for Canada. It's good yeah, for the people. It's great for Canadians. It's going to make yeah. our homes more efficient. We just need to sort of look at things differently. Right. And there's uh, work involved here, but the end result is burning less gas and less emissions. So it's yeah. it's it's a good thing that we're doing it. It's just we need to all collectively go pull it off now. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that's probably worth noting is you're on the, the CIPH CHC technical committee, just like I am. You and I are both invested in like, let's donate time and knowledge and, and collaborate as this change comes forward, because there's a variety of different approaches. And you made a great comment, less gas. What we're talking about is not getting a rid of gas. We're talking about hybrid approaches, improving all overall efficiency. And I think that building officials and contractors and others need to be reaching out to their smart friends and mentors now because literally in a matter of months, this industry is going to get turned upside down. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be uh, the next, uh, really the next ten years, especially when you think about uh, decarbon electrification. The next ten years in the in the mechanical industry is going to be more disruptive, more revolutionary than any previous ten years, no matter what, no matter what you compare it to. I mean, when when tankless water heaters were launching, it was seen as a big deal. You know, it was, yeah. the, it was a big change in technology. The, yeah. everything's just shifting to a new world. Uh, and yet tankless is still like you know less than 10% of the the units that go out there something like that it's it's relatively small relatively non disruptive for for as much as it was very disruptive um, this is going to be a much bigger shift these, well, this. you make a good comment like the tank tankless is cool technology and it's you know it's new to the market but the reality is people are just getting accustomed to tankless technology as it stands now meanwhile i was just at AHR we were filming content there and there's literally a manufacturer that has a CO2 heat pump tankless Right, and people are like, oh, tanklesses are neat. Give it three years because this CO2 tankless heat pump is ready, available, coming to the market. And meanwhile, our brains are going, what do you mean a heat pump tankless? Like, I'm, I'm confused now. How do those go together? So it's exciting. There's a lot of cool stuff coming, and you know, it's going to be a really interesting uh, journey over the next few years to see where things go. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome.